hey there guys, welcome back to an episode of Dreaming Grief. So today, right, I will be showing you guys the 25 gallon innovative marine lagoon tank build. So you guys have seen the 14 gallon previously. So today I'm actually going to show you the larger one, the 25 gallon build. So okay, so for the next 2020, right, I will be doing a couple of updates on the 14 gallon as well as this new 25 gallons. So the reason why I've gone with the innovative marine brand is a couple of reasons. One is because that um, this is mainly for all my Singaporean viewers, right? We all know how small our house is and not all of us can afford or have the time, the effort to actually maintain a tank like my fish only system. And majority of us would still want to be in a hobby, but then we didn't really want something that is too time consuming. So this is why I felt that personally the Innovative Marine series, right, it's pretty good. It's affordable, it's within range, it's small in size. At the same time, it still can give you a lot of uh, returns when you actually put in um, the little hard work that you guys do to have a beautiful reef. So for the next couple of months, right, I'll be giving you guys an update on what's going on with the 14 gallon as well as this new 25 gallon over here. And I'll give you guys a little tips here and there on what I've done with the tank in terms of the internal overflow, in terms of the equipment and the corals that is going to go in this tank. So for the both tanks, it's going to be a reef tank. So yes, there will be corals in both tanks. They'll be a bit different, but then I'll show it to you guys once I started adding corals and stuff into the tank. Okay, so for not further ado, right, we will just walk through the tank pick itself. So this is the 25 gallon innovative maroon lagoon series. So I really like their lagoon series because the tank itself is very slick. All innovative marine tanks are beautiful because of the very nice clarity glass you guys get, right? And it's three-sided, so you can actually view it from this. This is the main angle. So this tank itself here is about 60 cm across. So it's about two feet. And then if you look from the side, right, so this is the from the side itself. If I'm not wrong, the side is about 40 to about 50 cm. So the whole tank is actually very nice. All three sides is crystal glass. So it's the clarity is there. Innovative marine tank, one thing is that it really pops. It's really beautiful. It's just look at the tank alone, right? It's pretty on its own already. The very nice rimless design. I love tanks with rimless design, but one thing I hate about rimless design, right, is the fact that when your fish jumps. So for all the rest lovers, this is one thing that you really want to be careful with any innovative marine stuff, right? Or even for the Red Sea reefers, right, try to get a mesh on top because chances are your fish will jump. I have a lot of time my restors jump up from all of my rimless tanks. So I will probably put a mesh on top when I'm actually not doing video. So only for you guys, it will look like this. But most of the time, I will probably have a mesh on top. Okay, so we will go through equipment wise. Okay, firstly, let's go through the tank itself. So the reef itself, right, we will look at the overflow section. So it comes with two return nozzles, one on each side. So it's the standard nozzles, right? If you want to go for the spin stream, you can add on the spin stream to either one of them. So it's two overflows. So what I did was I actually put two um, custom caddies into it. So one side, right, on the left side, what I did was I actually do the biomedia. So I will show it to you guys. So my filter floss is on the first and then um, the marine pure blocks on the second and the third chamber. So this will be for one side. And then for the other side, it will be a bit special. So as you guys can see, I actually removed the the sticker or the black stuff that's on the back. The reason why I want to do for this side, right? Um, I'm going to make this into a refugium. So same thing, I will use the custom caddy, but what I'll make it a bit different, right, is I will put like filter floss on top and then in the middle section, right, I will actually use it for a refugium, mainly for Keto. So I'm planning to get the the innovative marine. So everything here, I'm planning to go with innovative marine. It's a very uniform design for it. So I'm going to go with the Innovative Marine, the Keto Light. If I'm, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the light for Refugium. So it's going to be mounted at the back here. And then this is where I will grow my Keto with. 
So there's two chambers over here that is mainly for all your equipment stuff. So I'll probably run the go schema on one side and then the reactor on the other side. And the return pump actually goes back to my um, one side fits into this side and then the other side actually goes in to my chiller. So my chiller, right, I am using the HS28. So I will show it to you guys from the back. So yeah, so this is how it works. The green one is actually feeding in, down, and then after that, the black one comes back up is to the return. So, okay, so you guys can see, right, it's not very pleasing with all the red tips and everything, right? So, okay, this is a tip for you guys. One tip for you guys, when you guys are doing an iOS tank, especially an iOS tank where you need to do something external like this, right? Always play safe. So even though it's not pleasing, but always play safe and electrical tape your stuff, especially all your joints, and then try to enforce it with cable ties. So I enforce every connection with cable ties. The reason because I do not want any risk of, let's say one day, either one of these holes pops, right? And the pump itself actually drains out all the water on the floor. So you will actually have a huge flooding issue if you do not do your holes properly, especially from here to the to the chiller and then back. So everything here is double proof. I will not say it's 100% fail, uh, fail proof, but then I try to minimize this. I really highly advise you guys, if possible, right? Always electrical tip and then cable dye all your equipment. So for the two nozzles, right, I will change them to the spin stream soon. But then we'll see how it goes first. And for the wavy wavy effect that you guys see over here, right, it's actually running on one of the j wave maker. So this is the smallest of the j -Bow. I can't remember what's the size of it really, but it connects into the cabinet itself. And this tank itself is running on two of the Aqua Illumination, the HD Prime. So I really like this light. I used it for all of my nano tanks, or uh, all the AI books, because the controllability, the lighting spectrum, everything looks good. So right now you see it's 100% blue, violet, uh, the royal blue, and it's about 20% white if I'm not wrong. So as you can see, it's really very nice. It's it's. A very good light it's affordable it's able to control and everything okay so we talk about the cabinet itself right so if you are buying an innovative marine tank usually you just get the tank only you don't get the stand so i actually got the stand from innovative marine and the reason why i get this right because it actually comes really nicely but then you can actually put it on any type of as long as it's a sturdy tabletop you should be able to keep one on it it's not very heavy but it's a uh, it just looks good so this one just get everything so if you look inside the cabinet right you get the four compartments it's very dark so i cannot really show you but there's like four sections here where there's like little holes at the back where you can actually run my powerpoint is on one side and then my all the adapters on the other side and then on top i'm actually going to keep like one for all the food equipment and everything and the other side will be my dosing chamber so this tank, I will be running a dosing for it. I'm actually planning to do the red C, A, B, C and the no box dose on the tank just to make sure that everything is stable. Um, I don't think I'll do an auto top part for it so soon, but I'll probably do it um, maybe in the near future ahead. But we'll see how that goes. So um, I've not really decided on the skip and everything yet. I'll keep that for the episode 2 for the 35 gallon build so it's going to be a very simple tank this tank um, you guys can drop a comment on anything or what you guys feel that i should do with this tank um, it's a lagoon style so probably there will be like rocks on one side and then a very minimal rocks on the other side i'm planning to do a mixed reef so but then focusing mainly on a lot of s um, either to sps and lps so there will be like uh, maybe a, a SPS colony over here and then the LPS on this side a couple of softies here and there but we will see how it goes things might change so once I get the skip in then we will talk about that in the later up videos really soon so I believe we have come to the end of today's video it's a pretty simple update it's just going to show you the tank and for those of you guys who are interested right this tank here 
will cost you about in Singapore dollars about 350 so if you guys are interested to get an innovative marine tank or you guys are interested to get a first starter tank right you can either go for the 14 gallon that I have look at the other video of mine or you guys can go for the bigger version the 25 lagoon it's an all-in-one system so you get the tank the pump okay you don't get a wave maker the chiller the cabinet but you get the tank and the pump so that's really what you need to start up so ah, another thing I prefer to share with you guys is the sand so right now I'm actually cycling the tank the sand in this system okay this is salt water right now it's running at 25 degrees and the sand I am using the curb C uh, this is the Bahamas pink if I'm not wrong uh, I choose a very very fine sand reason being is I like the I really like very nice white sand bit especially for a crystal glass tank right I always wanted very nice white sand because it really helps you to bring out that sharpness in your display but there is a lot of cons to it as small fine sand right tends to blow up pretty easy so you can see for one wave maker right, my tank is still cloudy yet and if you have like diatome, detrouters and everything right these guys will tend to brown very easily so you have to really put in a lot of effort a lot of hard work to maintain white sand bit which I don't really know if I have the time to but we will see how it goes in the near future so same thing you guys stay tuned for the next episode next episode we will be talking a bit on aquascaping how I will skip this tank what I will do with this tank and then once I've done the aquascape right then we will move on to our first edition of the livestock which is coral first and then to fish later on so same thing if you guys are interested in this build you guys want to know about the build right do subscribe to the channel and I will give you guys an update on the tank itself what's going on on the 14 gallon on the 25 gallon so hope you guys enjoy this short clip over here where I share with you guys the 25 gallon if you guys enjoy this, like the video, share the video at the same time, please do subscribe to this. I really appreciate the, the subscribers that's been coming in um, very, very consistently. So we have been hitting about 160 already, so keep pushing for it. And we will probably give you guys more content in the near 2020 ahead. So hope you guys have a great day. Hope you guys enjoy the video. I will see you guys soon next week.